Thank you. Thank you. This hey. is Humor Sunday. Thank oh, you. you know what, honey? You got to have, I think you got to have a light on the bottom. And are we on here? Uh, yes, thank oh, you. Oh, there we go. All you needed right, a woman's right. touch. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, the funny thing is, this, I, this is the way I normally dress. <laughs> <laughs> I like dressing this way. Humor Sunday and that. Uh, hi, my name's David. Hi, David. Oh, good. A lot of 12-steppers here. That's great. Um, <laughs> Uh, actually, the truth be known, uh, the, uh, uh, I am a recovering codependent, I, and, I, and uh, you have to talk about things honestly. I'm a recovering codependent. I don't know if you know about codependency. Some of you in the audience, a lot of head shaking. Boy, did I come to the right room. Uh, co codependency is when you use people to anesthetize your feelings, much like people do uh, other things, whether it's alcohol or gambling, whatever. And so I, I've done that. Um, I'm a recovering codependent. And what a great way to deal with that is stand in front of a room full of people and get you all to like me. <laughs> and, <laughs> thanks for getting that. I appreciate that. And here's why I knew I was over my codependency. I bought a bicycle built for two and, and rode it by myself. <laughs> thanks for getting that. See. <laughs> There's an amazing distinction going on today, and I was talking to Duke about this, uh, <laughs> the ghost of Duke. He's somewhere here. I don't know where, but um, the, I was talking to Duke about this. There's a major distinction of, of humor and laughter, and, and, and I think it's wonderful that Humor Sunday is Humor Sunday. Major distinction between humor and laughter. We can laugh for many reasons. Uh, like when you say just laugh, we can laugh. Laugh. We can just laugh. You just laugh. <laughs> Oh, you know, there's an important thing that, I, I, I for, uh, that, that uh, we, we forgot earlier. Did you know 20 seconds of hard laughter is worth two minutes of rigorous exercise? Did you know that? I will repeat that again, and I made a mistake. Uh, Dr. William Fry, 20 seconds of hard laughter is worth three minutes of rigorous exercise. Did you hear that, what I just said? So you tell me, treadmill or laughing, what do you want to do? Tell me. What do you want to do? Now, there's, a, there's some other truths here I want to tell you about this. It is absolutely proven that the endorphins are not kicked off in the brain when we laugh. It's, it's proven. That does not happen. But, but I, I, want you to, I want you to play along here just for a second with me. Because it's so amazing when I was sitting up there watching people about, about laughter, about laugh. As adults, we will not give ourselves permission to laugh. We will not give ourselves... I was watching some of you. You just won't laugh. I want you right now to laugh as hard as you can for 20 seconds. Will you do this? I want you to laugh as hard as you possibly can. For, 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 will, you, will you play along? Will you do it? Just, I want you to notice something that happens, okay? Anybody got a second hand? I don't. Uh, anybody, got, anybody got a second hand? They can give me 20 seconds. You had, tell us when to go. Go. <laughs> Let it rip! It's not the endorphins kicked off in the brain. I want you to appreciate the oxygen coming back into your brain. That's exactly what it is. Major distinction here. Major, we can laugh for any reasons. I want to talk about humor. Humor is it. Humor is spiritual. Humor is very spiritual. Humor is about one thing. It's about getting it. It's all up here in the brain. Did you know the sun is going to burn up in 2.6 billion years? Did you know that? Does that mean anything to anybody in this room? I'll tell you what that means to me. That means they're going to have to solve that Middle East conflict in the dark. <laughs> that's humor. That, that's the brilliance of humor is it's the getting it. We have to get it. We can laugh for any reason, but when we get something. Uh, yes, I do work on cruise ships. It's a tough job. I was on a cruise ship, and I saw, <laughs> and I saw a woman. I don't know if you get the irony here, putting on 30 block with a lit cigarette hanging out of her mouth. So it's the getting it. It's, it's, it's the getting it of, of, of the humor that, and the spiritual. And here's why I think it is for this reason. I'll just cut to the chase. And I'm going to talk about some things in the next few minutes that are going to make us uncomfortable. And it's not my intention to make us uncomfortable. Never my intention to make people uncomfortable. But I've been on an amazing journey since I started in this room. And one of those journeys I did with Duke. And, uh, and, and when I was asked to perform, I, that's not right. I was, not asked, I was asked to eulogize a woman named uh, Dorothy Ellison. Rick, are you here? I'm not sure if Rick is here or not. It would, uh, Rick Ellison was his mom. And Rick, uh, um, our, our eulogy, and Duke was there. And this was at um, uh, uh, Mount Moriah over on Holmes. And we're standing there, and there's Dorothy, and then I'm, I'm going to eulogize. And as a comedian, I performed everywhere. I mean everywhere. 
everywhere. You're looking at the guy that, that entertained uh, 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 Steppenwolf at the Uptown Theater. Steppenwolf. I don't know if you remember Steppenwolf. These are bikers. These are bikers. I took one foot on that stage and I'm getting F-bomb like you can't believe. And I stayed up there and I, and I was more scared that day when I did that Dorothy's funeral because it was real. It was honest. Plus there was somebody in a casket. I did ask him to shut the lid because I, they, they, and they said, why? And I said, well, I performed for a lot of dead audiences, but never anybody literally. So if you wouldn't mind. I mean, these are not jokes. I really said that. So right before we, they started the service, Duke Tufty comes up to me. I've known Duke for years. And he comes up to me, you know, as solemn as Duke can be with that wonderful sense of humor. He just looks at me and goes, David, this is going to go really good or really bad. And I'm glad I'm not you. And he walks off. <laughs> I'm standing there ready to, I'm standing there ready to, um, uh, go out before they, inter they introduce me like it's a show and I'm standing there and the funeral director recognizes me from doing stand-up comedy and he looks at me right before I walk out and goes, what are you doing? Are you going to do a show? And I said, well, it's not a show. I go, why? Has anybody ever done this before? No. So I went out. I did it and something magical happened and I noticed that day. And I learned this from a guy by the name of uh, Rabbi Alan Cohn, who used to be the rabbi at uh, Beth Shalom. He said at a funeral, what people want is to evoke a pleasant memory. To talk about something that's a pleasant memory. Boy, I see a lot of head nods on that one. To evoke a pleasant memory. And that's all I did. We talked about Dorothy. We talked about Dorothy when she was 80 and her 81-year-old sister going to strip clubs in Bourbon Street. Because that was Dorothy. And to eulogize the funny thing she did. Not to talk bad about her, but to do that. And that got me going on death. The subject that nobody wants to talk about. You don't want to hear about it. We don't want to talk about it. But yet, is there humor there? I teamed up with three hospices. Kansas City Hospice, Olathe Hospice, and St. Luke's Hospice. I'm going to ask you right now to think completely different. Just the mere mention of death scares us. But are there funny things that happen? Cancer is not funny. Agreed? There's nothing funny about cancer. Are there funny things happen in the treatment of cancer? Yes. Boy, I heard a big yes over there. And that's what, obviously it's happened to you, right? Yes, so you just know. It, it, it happens to you. So you have to pay attention to that. There's honest, funny moments. And that's what we have to pay attention to. I was asked to perform at the Allison Taylor Holbrook Foundation in, in San Francisco. This is a breast cancer uh, 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 group. And I was asked to perform in front of, of folks. And I was nervous too, because there was, these were real people in real pain. And I, I didn't realize men and women both get breast cancer. Did you know that? I didn't know. There's a guy here in town. We all know him. He used to run Blandy's in Westport, Dick Schulte. Dick Schulte had uh, breast cancer. He had a mastectomy one week. His wife could not handle his, his uh, uh, having cancer, and she divorced him the week before. She divorced him. He had a mastectomy. His joke was, I lost three boobs in two weeks. That was his joke. <laughs> Funny? Funny? Yeah. Okay to laugh at that? You bet. Okay, so I go out to the Allison Taylor Holbrook Foundation, and I'm talking, and so I remembered that. And Bar you have to remember who Barbara Johnson is. Barbara Johnson, it's not the, some of the Barbara Johnson that some of you may think of. This is a woman named Barbara Johnson that asked me to go out there. Barbara Johnson, this woman was a character. When she was going through her second breast tumor, nothing stopped her. Nothing stopped her. She was going through the airport they call first class and platinum, and she walked up with her coach ticket and handed it to him. Before they told her she couldn't board, she just pulls off her wig and goes, chemo, bad day, thank you, and walked right on down. And nobody stopped her. So I'm standing there in front of these folks making them laugh. And I had one woman. This is one of the most pointed things, two pointed things happened there. But one of the most fascinating things that happened to me. While, I, while I'm doing the presentation there, I notice a woman get this visibly upset, gets up and leaves. And I was really upset. And I asked Barbara, because, you know, when you first start off as a comedian, and, you know, silence is not a friend to a comedian. People staring at you is not a friend to a comedian. My whole way that I get, my poll, my surveys, is I say something, you laugh. That's it. But I didn't realize a lot of people were taking it in and thinking while I was talking. And this woman got up left, and I asked Barbara, I said, that, that really bothered me. She goes, David, don't. Some people aren't ready to laugh. Some people aren't ready to laugh, and that's okay. you got to keep talking about it. you got to keep doing it. This woman comes up to me afterwards, and th this is the most poignant thing I've ever heard. By the way, I must say this. I know this is a very diverse group, but I've never entertained in front of a dog before. I just, I just, I, I have absolutely no idea. I, I don't know, I don't know if I just, whoop, whoop, I don't know what I say. If I stop, I guess I'm not doing good if he lifts his leg, I guess. I don't know. So can, can you do a, a lift the leg joke in church? I don't know. Um, I don't know, but I, but I guess I just did. 
uh, by the way, uh, l let me use my wonderful ADD personality. I just got rid of the squirrels at my house, if anybody's interested. Uh, if you have problems with squirrels at your house. Um, I love the little things. A buddy of mine goes, why don't you get a 22 and blow them away? Well, you may, may want to try anger management. Um, <laughs> I don't want to kill the squirrels, I just want to let them know who's in charge. So I came up with something, and I don't want any letters from Pete anybody. This didn't really hurt him, but I let them know I was in charge. I went to the dollar store and bought that stuff, Pop Rocks. Have you ever seen Pop Rock? That's, that stuff explodes. And it doesn't really hurt them, but you know, it's so funny to see them climb a tree and just... <laughs> and then another one goes to eat it, and the other one grabs his tail and goes, don't eat that stuff, man. I've been on Prilosec for three weeks. Stay away from that stuff. That, the hat almost fell off. Okay, I'm just going to stop here just for a second. My daughter, my daughter's in the spa business, just the wonderful Rachel, said, Dad, do something with the hair. So, she said, do that. That's cool looking. She said, that's really hip. Now, the reason these people are laughing behind me for a good reason, this may look okay this way. Watch when I turn around. It just stops. That's why I wear the hat. You gotta laugh at yourself, folks. You gotta laugh at yourself. If you don't laugh at yourself, you're not gonna make it. That's the whole point of bullying. Boy, am I low all over the map or what? I'll get to bullying in just a second. I, I am, I told you, I'm, I'm pleasantly ADD. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like the ultimate show with the remote control. What was he talking about? What was he talking about? What was he talking about? <laughs> so I'm back at the Allison Taylor Holbrook Foundation. Told you, I know where, I know where I'm at. <laughs> I put stakes in my brain, and I know where I'm coming back to. And so, um, but this woman said the coolest thing. These women were glorious, too, that, that taught me how to laugh at breast cancer. I would not have no idea being a man or never having it and what to do. And this woman came up to me. I can't say her name. I'm going to tell you the names of real people. But she, she didn't allow me to say her name. 71 years old. She said, David, I want to tell you something. I went to see my doctor after my mastectomy, a female doctor. And I said, doctor, since I just have one breast now, do I get 50% off on this visit? <laughs> Is that true? And I, and I said, what a funny, as a comic, I'm thinking, that's a funny line. And I said, did your doctor laugh? She said, no. I don't know if she laughed or not. I didn't do it for her. I did it for me. That's why we do it. We do it for ourselves. Why do we do it for ourselves? Because humor lives in the way we think. Fear lives in the way we think. It's all the way we think. You are diagnosed with something terrible, or you heard something terrible, our brain goes crazy, the what-ifs especially if you're diagnosed.